Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, a Silver Level Associate and a top recruiter at 7K Metals. And I ask that you join me in welcoming return special guest, Knowledge Decipher, AG Leverage, to the show. Hi, AG. Hi, Dawn. How are you today? I'm excellent. I'm so glad that you are with us today and excited about our topic. We're going to talk today about what is repo. So let's get to it. So AG, the TV media has been talking a lot about this term over the last month, repo. So when they say repo, are they talking about car repos? Break it down for us. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it's not a car repo. And, and it's a shame they don't, they don't talk. They mention the word repo, but they don't define it. So repo, they're referring to the repo rate, which is the federal funds rate. The federal funds rate is, it's the overnight repo rate that the banks, it's, it's the overnight rate that the banks use in when they give collateral to one another in the middle of the night, or short term that is, uh, and they do it in the form of Federal Reserve notes, Treasury bills. And what they do is they, they keep each other liquid. And it's been between a two to two and a half, two and a quarter percent uh, short term repo rate. So the repo rate is that two to two and a quarter percent number that they use between one another to lend themselves money, uh, again, in the form of notes or, or Treasury bills, so that they can stay liquid and they can do what they term are riskier investments. In this case, we're talking about equities. So the goal behind that is so that each morning, these banks have the monies available. Again, at two, two, it's been two, and two, two to two and a quarter percent all this time, so they remain liquid. Now, a few weeks ago, you and I talked about how that rate went to 10%. It yes. went to 10% for two reasons. One, they didn't have liquidity, and two, those that did have liquidity to lend to one another were not willing to take the risk, so they went ahead and hired the interest rate because basically the banks, that shows that the banks don't trust one another. <clears throat> so <laughs> they went to the bank of last resort, which right now is the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve went ahead and and created liquid to put into these banks so that each morning they have it available to them. The reason that that creates uh, a question mark insofar as the, the, the moment in our economy, what, what quality economy do we have, is if the Federal Reserve isn't making these capital injections into our banks, then in what condition and what health are these banks in, right? Exactly, and... and so, should we even trust them? You know, can you give us a little insight on um, their policies? Yeah, and, th and that. So, so, so in theory, the the central banks now have this money that's come out of thin air from the Fed that's injected into them. Now they they're supposed to see that as a liability, but when they when they give it to their smaller private banks, the private banks are are supposedly putting it down as, as an asset that they in turn lend out to, to uh, corporations and to the general economy. That's in theory the way it's supposed to work. But an injection of money, money created from nothing, is by definition a liability. So what are we talking about, though, regarding the banks? Um, what condition are the banks in? First of all, should we trust the banks? This is what you asked. So what a bank does is, well, let's start a little higher up. Through the government, were taxed dollar bills. Those dollar bills end up at a bank, and that bank, in turn, goes ahead and lends it either back to us or to the general public at a higher rate, certainly a higher rate than, than they would make it available to us. Now, once we have that loan and once we have that debt, they then, in turn, tax us um, further reducing our means available to pay down that initial loan with the high interest debt that is working against us. 
So you would you would look at that and say, hold on. So you're saying that they take our money from us to in turn lend it back to us at a higher rate, and then on the side they tax us at a at a particular rate, which this allows us from being able to pay back that original loan in, in any kind of uh, uh, peaceful or, or, or adequate capacity. In other words, it's, it, it becomes a stressful situation because it's a way of keeping us on forever debt. So is that a mistake? Are they doing that because they err in their ways? Uh, the answer is no. The, the banks are a for-profit idea. Their goals are not your goals and my goals. Their goals are to profit. And this is an unbelievable way to profit because it forces us into this rat race that we really cannot escape. And so you would ask, is that predatory? It is predatory from the perspective of it's being done against us because we, we're too naive. This isn't, this isn't taught in school or university or economics classes or anything. Is it predatory? Well, part of predatory means that we don't consent. But in this case, not only do we consent, we're complacent because once we learn about this, we do little to change our personal circumstances regarding our finances, right? Yep. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> so, you mentioned a lot that we should act like our own central bank. What do you mean by doing that, and how can we back our own assets? So, again... The central banks have always been asked up until now, well, let's backtrack a little bit, reserves. Reserves mean the amount that a bank should have based on the assets that it has, based on the, on the commodities, based on its, on its riskier investments like equities and derivatives. They're supposed to have cash reserves, and they're asked to have 10% cash reserves. Now, recently, gold was deemed as equal to to the cash in that it's a no risk uh, no risk um, assets and so we should have at least 10 percent of our assets to back it in the form of precious metals y yesterday or the day before you and I were having a conversation I couldn't come up with the word assets I was saying that currently we're in a moment where we're printing paper, we're printing credit, we're printing debt, and, it, and it's across the board, corporations, bonds, governments, etc. And what's happening is that our debt, our credit, our, our available paper far exceeds the amount of actual assets that we have to back that paper. That paper is just, it, it's ballooned gargantuanly compared to the amount of assets in the form of gold and silver, land, oil, businesses, buildings, corporations, cities, you name it, dams, ports, the paper far exceeds the amount of assets that we physically have to back that paper, which means that the, the value of that paper is on the floor. So once we, once we learn that, it becomes our responsibility to say, okay, then I have to back my own debt, my own whatever it is that I have out there that I, that I believe I have with something physical. Now, the bank's use cash and up until recently they've now they're also now going to gold uh, they're not using silver but they are using gold um only because silver it's at uh, 18 19 dollars an ounce versus gold it's at uh, 1500 dollars an ounce so the, the 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 big banks and and the countries themselves must use gold it's just a, it, it's a it's it's a bigger price denomination per ounce and therefore they they uh, deal in tonnage so okay but in the same manner as these banks in these countries use cash and gold to back up what they're, what they're supposed to have in so far as risks, so too should we. And because silver is at such an affordable rate, as we've talked before, versus uh, the ratio compared to gold, uh, the price point is so low on a per ounce basis that silver is really what we should have and house and hold as something that backs up both our assets and our risks and liabilities. And what's beautiful about it is that everyone can afford it, even if it's just one piece at a time. It's not like gold, so it's something that can be budgeted for the average American or world world citizen, <laughs> if <Yeah>. you will. <laughs> 
So, A.G., in closing, can you leave us with a wonderful tip of the day? Yes. Uh, there, there's a friend who recently, his daughter was suffering from anxiety, and he asked, what, what, what do we do? And, and it seems something, it seems so normal nowadays. All of us have moments of, of anxiety or stress or whatever we want to call it. And I'm a big fan of the forest and of the lake, and specifically Big Bear Lake in, in Southern California. And, and a fan of it mostly because it's somehow being in, in the forest uh, by the lake or even beachside, it doesn't matter, being in nature where there's no thought of dollar bills, there's no chasing of dollar bills. Because for whatever reason here in the concrete jungle, we're forever pursuing being on time somewhere in order to make a dollar. We're thinking, how do I save a dollar? How do I invest a dollar? What do I do with a dollar? And that becomes our entire existence down here. So if we want to de-stress, if we want to get away from the concrete jungle, get away from smog, get away from, from traffic, there's nothing more beautiful than just going into, into nature. So I suggest everyone takes a moment to themselves and gets lost in some nature. I think that's some wonderful advice. Thank you so much. And as we close today's show segment, we want to especially thank our show sponsor, SilverPreparedness.com. When you visit the website, you're going to see very thought-provoking information that's going to provide answers to questions you've probably always pondered, making sense of what's really going on with the dollar. So head over today to SilverPreparedness.com. And the added benefit is that if it feels like a fit to you, then AG Leveraged and myself will be your team mentor. Now, that's a win-win-win scenario you're going to want to jump in on. Thank you again, AG, for your profound insights. And until our next segment tomorrow, we're going to leave you with this information. The quote of the day is, how someone treats you is their karma. How you react is your karma. So overlaying that quote to the economy, here's how I interpret interpret that to be. Be proactive, take action, react in a calm way by sharing this information with others, and this will surely create peace of mind and an abundant karma for your future. Signing off for now, good day. <laughs>